Good day, YouTube. Today is Sunday. It's the 8th of April, 2018, and uh, it was kind of a rainy weekend this weekend, so I thought I'd spend uh, at least part of it working in the step band. So uh, yesterday I remounted the mixer board. I also mounted... I'm sorry, it's real dark in here. It's real hard to get light in here. There's three lights burning in here. I remounted there, or finally mounted the laptop mount. Let me see if I can get a little light closer. All right, that's a little better. So that's the mount that I bought. I just bought it on eBay. Um, I'm real happy with it. Happier with this mount than I am with my TV mount, which turned out to be a little bit flimsy of a TV mount. Um, but it'll work. I need to strap that thing to the wall anyway so it doesn't rattle all over. But anyway, it's on an articulating arm that will be able to pull out and I can move it around a little bit. So articulating arm for the laptop. Um, again, happy with it. Um, and today we're going to work on the lighting because it's so... Everything as intended kind of sucks the light out of the room. So with the... Uh, two lights there and one in my hand you still can't see anything in here but the idea was to keep the sound down the light down make it a very nice uh comfortable studio um and have kind of low light but to get light in here permanently i had to always plan to put a board at about a 45 degree angle at that corner all the way down to the end on both sides this turns out to be 12 feet from here to the near the end but i'm as i've mentioned before i'm going to use that for a wiring chase so i need to have access to it so the plan to hinge it off the top and mount the lights in it and then maybe just put a few screws in it you know, every three four feet or something or find some sort of a latch Maybe even super strong magnet, something like that, so I can pull it off and get in there and run some wire and then put it back. That's the whole idea. Um, so today, I went down and got what I finded. What I finally found in a one-piece board was a one by eight in pine. Let's uh, head over here. So I got two one by eights in pine. They're twelve feet long. They're just perfect in length. I laid out, these are the lights. I have another video if you want to see how I'm going to do these. Um, I figure, I bought 12 of them, so I got six for each side. They're LED, they're for like a motorhome or a boat. Um, decent LED lights. And then I, on my other video, when I kind of bench tested these, they're all going on a central switch slash dimmer. This is a 30 amp rated. It's very oversized for what I have. But uh, that is the point. So I've got, I've started laying out my marks. So I'm going to come in 12 inches with my first light. And then they're just going to be simply two feet on center. So there's three feet. There's five feet. Seven feet and so on to the end. So I was down at Harbor Freight this morning, just now. Trying to find a hole saw that was three and a quarter or three and three eighths inch so that I could drill these holes for these lights. You're going to have to hit that pretty good. And uh, it's, uh, they didn't have anything. It goes, basically goes from three to three and a half. Three inch being too small, three and a half uh, will exceed those bolt centers. So I don't have any experience with this adjustable circle cutter but we're about to so i thought what i do is uh we'll keep this video going for putting these lights in um we we'll want to get all of these cut i'll get this so uh, get these boards kind of sanded down a little bit today and then i want to stain them i thought about painting them black because i'm going for a real dark look in there but I'm visualizing that in my mind. I thought, well, it'd be nice to have a stain, but I really didn't want it brown, not up against the blue. So I went to Lowe's, and uh, uh, one of my buddies, Gary, works in the paint shop, was working today. And I said, can I get something in a stain that is black that will sh make it look like wood, yet make it not look like painted wood? Um, 
and do it on pine. So he did this for me. Yeah. It's basically this ebony stain. And then I got a, a high gloss polyurethane to go over that. So that's the intent here. And I think that'll look really good against not only the blue gray carpet, but the lights itself without being a massive contrast. So that's the look I was hoping for. Uh, feel good about all of that. So what I need to do now is finish laying these lights out. Let me put you in a stand here real quick. And we'll do a separate video review of that circle cutter. Um, let me drop it down here just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to just finish uh, marking these out. How I like to do the center is with a T-square. So I've made sure that this is centered from either direction. And then you can just lay it up against here and mark your center. I've already marked my every two feet. Bring that one down a little bit. Now I have dead centers to drill my holes with this hole cutter. Alright, I have all my centers. I need to find a block of wood to block this up with a little bit because I don't want to drill a hole in the deck of my truck. So let me get that set up and then uh, I'll uh, cut that hole cutter out of its package. I'll do a quick review on that and we'll post that as a separate video and I won't bore you with it here if you don't want to see it. If you do, um, it'll be a separate video for you to See, I've never used one. Seems like a good idea because I can get the exact size I need because it's infinitely adjustable. So we'll do that. I'll check you back with you momentarily. Well, this is going pretty good, actually. Um, I am using this uh, adjustable hole cutter that I bought just this morning uh, at Harbor Freight. I just did a review video that I'll post if you want to see more in depth on this cutter. Um, got two more holes to cut in this board, and this one will be complete. Uh, my uh, cordless drill is certainly at its limit running this thing. So we had to step up the game a little bit on the drill motor. finish that from the other side so it doesn't blow it out and it uh, once it gets down about 80% uh, of the way through the board it seems to really slow down so it's uh, faster to go from both sides of the way through on one side and then through the other side so um, great tool I don't know how else I'd have done this today without it I like it okay Let me, uh, I'll wipe the dust off I'll show you the quality of its cut and it's fast I mean I don't think a whole saw would to do it any faster then you got to pry the stupid slug out of the saw but I couldn't get one the right size so uh, this is good this is real good nice and clean and then again I went from both sides so it didn't blow out the backside either that's a three and three-eighths inch 
hole. Hang on, I'm pulling my glove off here. Da -da -da -da. These lights have that little ledge right there by the screw hole, so they'll set in there about halfway till they hit that ledge. And then as you drive the screws in, they'll tighten up, be real snug. So those are going to look fabulous. I already showed you the color, didn't I? But that's the uh, idea of the stain using an ebony wood finish and then a clear gloss polyurethane. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so I got another board to cut. And uh, then we got to do a little sanding on this and then uh, we'll put a finish on it. I'm glad we're going to get this far today. It's pretty cool. Now, I got to tell you, I was really hoping that I was going to fit like an LED strip light, maybe both on the top and the bottom, um, in a ultraviolet, like ultraviolet purple blue, you know. Um, that's really kind of what I wanted in there. Just kind of an accent color when the van's just sitting when people are looking. But uh, I couldn't find a way to put the strip light in these things and hide it and be able to hinge this board down off the ceiling like I wanted it. It's just It was just gonna look cheap. So I went online briefly this morning. I think what I'm going to do is place a, a surface mounted ultraviolet purple LED here that points down. This will be at a 45 degree angle to the wall. So it will be like a wall wash. It'll give it some color on the inside without shining it into my eyes. And uh, so once I get these things kind of done, I'll look at how many I want. One, two, three, four, five, probably. Probably five down each side. I think it'd be good. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to continue drilling, and I'll catch you momentarily. Okay, the holes are drilled. I spent a little time with a piece of sandpaper just by hand and sanded down, kind of, uh, you know, knocking off the edges there a little bit, making sure there's no marks or anything. We're not shooting for furniture quality here. So, uh, let's make sure we're going to make sure our stain is good, like stirred up. There's some solids there in the bottom, so give us a minute here. We'll stir this up. And then we're going to apply the stain with a blue towel. That's the plan, anyway. Again, this is a Minwax Ebony. Very dark. It's virtually black. But it'll let the wood grain show through. And then we're going to put a gloss clear urethane finish on it. There we go. All right, going in. With a dark stain, or any stain, the more coats you give it, the darker it will get. So if we don't like what one coat does for this, and we probably won't, then we'll come back with a second coat, even a third, even a fourth. Okay, let's get some edges going here.
Hey, I'll continue to stain this thing and I'll check back with you in a second. I gotta peel the glove off to stop the camera. Okay, I'll give you a look at what one coat looks like. It's definitely gonna put another coat on. I like some of the brown coming through. That's kind of the look I was hoping for. Um, it really looks good. It kind of gives it that antique wood look. Um, but again, we were just trying to get away from painting it black, which is really what I was headed. But I'm glad I stopped and uh, my buddy Gary down at Lowe's, he popped a can of this ebony open and, and he uh, did that paint stick for me. I go, yeah, that's really what I'm thinking. So let's uh, go for another coat uh, right over top of this. It's, it's pine, so it's soft wood. That finish is soaking in pretty good. Won't take but a minute to put another coat on. I did the edges two coats already. They're good to go. Fresh gloves. And uh, maybe two will do it. I don't want uh, this light stuff coming through too much. I want to see the grain, but I don't want to wait. Certainly darkening up. Okay, let's do the other one. We've gone this far. There. We're getting really close what I'm hoping for. Let me grab a towel. We're going to let that sit for a little bit. Then we'll, uh, we just got to come back and wipe the excess off so we don't get blotchiness there. I can do this without getting it all over my fingers.
again just a dry blue towel kind of knock off the heavy stuff even out the finish and then we got a high gloss clear to go on that and man I'm starting to get anxious to see what that looks like because I really like what is happening here Okay, look at that. That's just pine. It looks good. Looks good. Find another pair of gloves here. Gosh, this is gonna look nice. Good job. It's fun to work with metal some days and paint and body some days, and it's always fun to work with wood. Never be afraid to experiment a little bit. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, hey, we gotta let that sit there for a little bit. I might hit it one more time with a towel just to wipe the excess off. And then uh, I'll read the directions on the can and see how soon we can put the clear on it. So, I'll check back with you shortly. Oh, wait a minute. Let's set a light in there. Gotta see it, gotta see it. Getting anxious. Let's see. How can I do this? Knock it on the floor. There it is. Right on. Okay. See you in a minute. Okay, it's looking good. I got one good heavy coat of uh, clear on the boards. And they're looking pretty good. I'm sure it'll need a two or three coats. So I'll let this dry today. I should. I didn't even look to see how long this stuff is supposed to take to dry. But I'm sure over the course of the next few days, I'll do a second, third coat on these. They look great, don't they? So uh, to get that much uh, look out of, you know, relatively inexpensive pine boards say relatively inexpensive these were like $37 worth but <clears throat> compare that to oak or something different but look at all that color it's really cool I'm real happy with it so I'm gonna wrap this video up uh, I'll do this couple other coats I'm sure there'll be a follow-up video when I get all the lights in and installed in the step van and I'm thinking I think I mentioned it earlier but between these, I'm going to order a surface mounted uh, kind of a ultraviolet blue LED that's going to shine down onto the wall. Um, going to order, I already ordered them. I ordered a dozen of them. So I know I can easily fit 10 in the middle of these lights. I think that would look cool. It will just give a spot, kind of a wall wash effect. And that'll look. Uh, pretty cool. So that's it um, for this episode. I got the boards all done. Um, it'll just be a matter of letting it dry. We'll get it assembled. I'm going to run down the hardware store because I didn't even think to look for the hinges. So I got to buy hinges because I got to hinge this off the ceiling um, so they can come back in place at an angle in the corners, upper corners of the step van. When I need access behind them, I can pull them off. Do what I need to do and then put them back. Um, that should be good. So thanks for hanging with me and we'll uh, catch you on the next video.